Hey guys, Justin here and welcome to today's video. We're looking at how to implement the Line 6 Helix native VST plugin to a live worship situation where you might just have a laptop on stage, a simple interface, a simple control surface, and that's it. You don't need to bring along the huge Helix pedal board or you don't have to bring along your HX Stomp. You just need two very small pieces of gear which I will show you. So the question needs to be asked, why would you want to use Helix Native instead of you know your well-established Helix Floor, Helix LT, or HX Stomp? I think the answer will depend on your needs as a band. You see, I've been spending the last two weeks learning how to incorporate Ableton Live into my live setup, no pun intended. For the past two weeks, I've been using Ableton as the means by which I can sing the band up using not just a click track but also a guide track where I get the you know I program Ableton to give out cue commands intro two three four just so that the band can be synced up together with Ableton I'm able to automate some of those things like MD cues um, song segment cues dynamic cues and a click track in my Ableton wood shedding sessions, I learned that you can get Ableton to automate the helix. I can use MIDI clips to send out commands to change presets and snapshots. Now that got me thinking, if I'm using Ableton to automate my patch changes, I don't need to have exclusive control over my patch changes, my snapshot changes, because if Ableton is doing it, then I don't need to do it. And that kind of makes the controller component of the hardware side of things completely irrelevant, right? Enter Helix Native. Now I know that Helix Native was meant to be a studio application. You work on your sounds of the studio, you create the patch you want, and then you can export that patch, put it onto the Helix, and then you've got your studio to stage promise. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up Helix Native to operate in a live worship environment for two situations. Number one, a set arrangement where you play a song from start to finish. Number two, for spontaneous moments where you need some control over your kind of sounds in case your worship leader goes off the rails and wants to do something completely different. So if you are already using Ableton on stage with a laptop, then this way of simplifying a setup might be the way to go. Let's talk about software and hardware. There are two bits of software that you will need. Number one is obviously Line 6 Helix Native, and you can download the software for free with a 15-day trial period, but thereafter, you need to authorize the software on your laptop or your PC or whatever. You know, there are like, I think you're allowed six authorizations, so I don't think you run out of devices to authorize it on. The obvious barrier of entry for this system is the price of Helix Native. Now, if you're getting this VST plugin by itself, it is going to be extremely expensive. I think it's $499 or something, some ridiculous price. But if you're an existing Helix user, there's a very significant discount. I think by itself, it's $99. But if you manage to catch the summer sale, which is a 30% off, you can get this for $69. So that's what I did. I waited for the summer sale. And I figured, you know, it's not going to get any much cheaper than this. So I bit the bullet and I got hold of Native. If you don't have a Helix product, this is going to be a very expensive endeavor. So I would recommend if you don't have a Helix yet, try and find somebody who has a Helix, has registered his gear and doesn't mind lending his credentials so that you can download the software and authorize it with his credentials so that it can bring down the price significantly. The second software you will need is something to automate these changes as they go along. I recommend Ableton Live Lite because it is absolutely free, 100% free. It is a piece of software that I think is intuitive to learn if you're a musician. So if you're not familiar with Ableton, stop the video, go and look up some tutorials, learn a bit of and get yourself familiar with arrangement view and then come back to this video because the rest of this video is not going to make much sense if you don't know some basics of ableton and i'm talking about very basic stuff I, i'm not doing advanced automation or whatever this is all simple stuff so uh, check out jake gosling's video i think jake gosling is his name go check out uh church front the, the Ableton live videos there. I believe Church Front has an hour long session on Ableton and I think it's been very helpful to summarize and succinctly demonstrate the capabilities of Ableton. Second part of this video is the hardware side of things. 
how are you going to get your guitar into Ableton? Now, I said that you need two small pieces of gear, and I was not kidding. I am using the iRig Pro interface and the Blueboard controller. And most of the time, I'm not even using this because I'm automating all my changes with Ableton's automation feature. I just need to get my guitar into the system. So this is the way to go. This is, um, yeah, the only problem I find with this is that it's all plasticky and cheap material stuff. So uh, it is melt the rubber on this is melting and the plastic here is not very sturdy. So I wouldn't, you know, step on this too hard or throw it around if I were you. But you can see here, tiny, 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 tiny. And that's one of the reasons why I like this native setup because I just need one small, simple component. And put together, I think the combo of the iRig Pro and the Blueboard together could cost $150 First hand, I'm not very sure, I can't remember because I got this on a sale uh, at the previous, 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 previous Amazon sale. Yeah, it's pretty old. I, I didn't get it. I got this first hand, but I believe if you get it second hand, it can, it can be a lot cheaper. All right, you have your software, you have a hardware, it's time to configure these things. First step open up Ableton, let everything load, and then you will have to open up preferences and make sure that Ableton is seeing your audio interface. So just make sure that it's seeing it as the input device. Uh, in my case, this is the iRig Pro, so I make sure that input says iRig Pro. For output, you gotta make sure that it is, uh, this interface does not have an output, so I'm using the MacBook's um, analog output from the headphone port as my output. But if you have an interface that has got TRS outs on the back, you can specify the output and then that will make your life maybe a bit easier because I think that there's a bit of noise coming from the, uh, the headphone output if I were to use the, you know, if I hook everything up and have a power supply going, uh, some ground loop noise can be heard from the headphone output. So just, just you know, laying out there for you. So make sure that your preferences um, and Ableton sees this, all right? Once you set your preferences correctly, you can now drag the VST plugin onto the audio track and whichever audio track that you place it on, that will become your Helix native channel. And you will need to press the record button on that, uh, that strip to arm it for recording. Pressing the record button doesn't start recording, but it arms the track for recording. In other words, you'll be able to hear the ins and outs. You can hear your guitar and you can hear how it's processed and then sent out from the Helix native plugin. Now scroll through some presets, choose the preset that you want, and then you will now be able to see uh, the snapshot window just like on the Helix uh, floor or the Helix LT. Now what you want to do is that you want to start toggling presets excuse me, you want to toggle the snapshots. Once you start toggling snapshots, what you will see is you should see a red line that will jump up and down. That red line jumping up and down in arrangement view is your snapshot index. Now what that is, it, it is the means by which you're going to automate these changes. If you were to click this line and move it up and down, you will see that your snapshots will change from one to eight uh, as you bring it up and down respectively. Okay, so once you get snapshot index as an automation track, what you're going to do is that you're going to use locators to designate snapshots one through eight. In my case, I only have four buttons on my iRig Blueboard, so I'm going to use four snapshots. And I create four, uh, I have four locators set up on different parts of the timeline. I recommend putting it at, you know, two bars apart or something because you're going to need to draw different envelopes. You're going to have to draw uh, different envelope shapes between steps, shots one and four. Now that may sound confusing, but let me explain. You see, uh, Ableton runs on a timeline system, timeline system. So when you press the play button, it's kind of like a, a digital audio workstation from start to finish. You know, you start from min bar one and then you the, the song finishes at bar 100, let's say. So it goes from left to right. The locators are physical locations on the uh, on the timeline that will uh, follow automation tracks. So, if you have snapshot one's automation index at snapshot index, excuse me, if you have it at let's say bar one, 
then you have snapshot two at bar four, snapshot three at bar eight, for example, you know, some arbitrary number. This will allow you to uh, change snapshots at those particular locators. So once you create those locators, you're going to double click on the snapshot index, uh, that red line there, to create two breakpoints. So bar one or bar four, at the very last count of bar four, you're going to have that second breakpoint to have a trapezoid shape so that uh, it's snapshot one for most of the bar and then right before, you know, count four point, you know, count 1.4 or something, that's going to change it to snapshot two. Same thing, um, at the very last bit, uh, let's say 2.4, the very last beat before uh, count three, you're gonna have, you're gonna draw, drag those um, breakpoints so that uh, it's snapshot two for most of the bar and then it changes to snapshot three. So that is how you're going to automate these changes. Once you set these break envelopes as snapshots one, two, three, and four on those locators, you can now assign one button to correspond to each locator. So turn on the MIDI mode, you can click on the MIDI button on the right hand corner and then any button that you press on your MIDI control surface will correspond to uh, a note value that will trigger that locator. So as you can see, when I press button A, I go to locator 1, which is snapshot 1. I press button B, it triggers a note to launch the timeline to snapshot 2 and locator 2 and so on and so forth. If you have an eight button surface controller or something like that, you know, you can easily set this up for eight snapshots, but I only have four because that's the limitation of my controller. Congratulations, once that is done, you should be able to press buttons and reach different snapshots as you will. And that is pretty cool, isn't it? This is for spontaneous moments. Let's say at the end of a set, when your worship leader wants to do something different, the click is off and everybody has a free worship spontaneous moment, you're able to stop the click and just use your MIDI controller on these buttons here to toggle between different snapshots. Now, remember how I said that you need to create two breakpoints so that right at the end of count four before the next beat, you move the diagonal so that the snapshot change can occur. Now, take this concept even further and do this for the whole song. In other words, you can automate changes for the whole song. If verse one has one kind of snapshot sound, verse two has a different sound, you put those break locators at the very end of verse one, just before verse two, to trigger the snapshot change. The breakpoints look like this. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You are now able to play for both spontaneous moments using your MIDI controller to toggle uh, snapshots in a free worship moment. You're also able to set this up so that you can play a song from start to finish without pressing a controller because as the song progresses, your snapshots are changing too. I hope you found this informative and helpful. If you have any questions, please do post them in the comment box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you for watching. This is Justin signing off.